Thank you all very much. It's great to see all your smiling faces here. You got engaged to Evan Anderson, really? How tall is Evan Anderson? 6'11". That's going to be a nice wedding cake you're going to have. It's going to be really tall. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Uh, a lot of times when I speak to groups, they say, how in the world did you get into broadcasting? Uh, well, I grew up on a farm outside of Wisconsin Rapids, so I'm one of the most least likely guys to be up here uh, to be on television for 30 years with a tie on. I thought I was going to be a milk truck driver when I was growing up, but it turned out I'm on television. Um, I really wanted to be an athlete like you guys. I really wanted to be a professional athlete. Um, when I was in eighth grade at St. Joachim's grade school in Pittsville, Wisconsin, which is in the center of the state, I averaged 14.8 points per game in the eighth grade. So the next year I go to Wisconsin Rapids Assumption High School and I'm a freshman. I'm on their freshman team. And we start practice, and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to be something else. I averaged 14.8 points per game last year in eighth grade in Pittsville. So the practice has started, and I had a little hard time, you know, figuring out the drills and all that sort of thing. But I thought, well, it'll, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Well, one day we got our uniform numbers. And I always thought, like, when you get a uniform number, it meant something. Either it was your favorite number or it reminded someone of who you played like. Like if you're 23, that's cool to have in basketball because then you're Michael Jordan, right? Well, they gave me number 25. And I'm thinking, this was, 19, you know, this was in 1976. And I'm like, who in the world is a great athlete that I remind them of that wears number 25? And I couldn't think of one. So the season started. I didn't get any playing time on the, on the freshman basketball team, except, you know, every once in a while they'd throw me in for a couple seconds. And this went on, and this went on, and this went on, and then it got to be February, and I finally had enough courage to go into the uh, coach's office and say, Coach, it's February. I averaged 14.8 points a game as an eighth grader at Pittsville last year, and, and I'm just not getting any playing time. What's up? Well, Jay, we have other options that give us a better chance to win, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but, but Coach, you gave me number 25. I thought that like my, maybe reminded you someone in the pros or college that that reminded you of what kind of game I had. He said, well, Jay, there is a reason we gave you 25. I said, what's that? Well, it reminds us that we either have to be 25 points ahead or 25 points behind for it to be safe to put you in the game. Which, now that I look back on it, made a lot of sense. And so that's why I got into broadcasting. Because it wasn't going to be sitting out where you are. So... It's a real privilege and an honor to wear a uniform, you know? Um, yeah, it's great to be a member of the Miami Heat, sure. But it's also important to be cognizant of how important it is to put on something that says Wolfpack or Madison College. Because of all the people in the world who wear number 25 in high school, who want to be sitting where you're sitting, it's a pretty big deal. And, and I hope you realize that... Uh, every day that you uh, do your, do your uh, athletics or your classwork. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about media. And man, media is changing. When I started 30 years ago, it was radio and television and newspapers, and that's it. Well, now everything's different from the way you look at news, the way you get your news, to the way you watch games. I'm fortunate to do some things with Big Ten Network. For example, there are many games on Big Ten Network where the game is at the Kohl Center. This, this is a true story. Big Ten Network called me to do a game, Wisconsin-Minnesota women's basketball. Game played at the Kohl Center on a Sunday afternoon at 2. They said, we want you in Chicago by noon. And I said, but I live in Madison. Why would I go to Chicago to do a wisconsin Minnesota women's basketball game. Well, here's how it works. To save money and to save costs on driving the satellite truck and everything else, they do four high-definition television cameras at the Kohl Center, and the announcers go to Chicago. The four high-definition cameras' pictures are streamed over the Internet to Chicago where they're put together, and so... Here is a guy who lives in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm sitting in a studio in Chicago, Illinois, in a darkened room with a 50-inch high-definition television monitor, and I'm doing play-by-play -play of the basketball game that's at the Kohl Center. 
at the end of the game, I say, final score, Wisconsin 52, Minnesota 48. Good night from the Kohl Center. And I jump in my car and drive two and a half hours home. So that's how media is changing. Now, those, are, those kind of things aren't probably going to happen here at, at Madison College. But the point is, anything you do and everything you do could be online, could become a story, could be seen by someone and many more people than you think. Uh, my job is television news. That's my main job. Uh, the, the, the world of... The world of television news has changed a lot. How many of you watch a local television newscast regularly? Five people, great. How many of you get your news on the internet? How many of you don't care about news? Okay, that's all right too. Um, I wish you'd watch TV though. So here's, here's how it breaks down, and, and I don't think there's any surprise here. If you're older, you watch more television, but look what happens on the internet, okay? So many more people, younger and younger, are getting more of their news and their information via the internet, and, and fewer and fewer with radio, and even television numbers tend to shrink, but television is still the, the most important vehicle where people get their news. And you're probably sitting here going, Man, TV stations never come to our games. We're not on the news. We barely get our scores on. Well, that doesn't mean you can suddenly, that doesn't mean you won't suddenly be thrust into the news, depending on what can happen. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative. For example, there's a guy named Jack Taylor who plays at Grinnell College. You know Jack Taylor? He, he, I think he was from somewhere near Eau Claire. You know what Jack Taylor did last year? He scored 137 points in a game, right? And what happened? Nobody ever heard of Jack Taylor. or You know, you heard of Grinnell College because they score a lot of points in basketball. But all of a sudden, Jack Taylor shows up on ESPN. He's doing live interviews on, on ESPN Sports Center. And before, you know, a day and a half earlier, Jack Taylor was a guy walking down campus in Grinnell, Iowa, which is in the middle of Iowa by Des Moines. And he's, he's just walking to class. And all of a sudden, the spotlight was thrust on him. And then you're saying, yeah, but it couldn't happen here. Well, it kind of happened here, at least in the Madison area, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know a golf course called Tumble Down Trails? You hear their story? Uh, September 11th, you know, the anniversary again of the uh, tragedy in New York with the Twin Towers happened. And a golf course in Verona, Wisconsin called Tumble Down Trails put an ad in the newspaper that they thought was trying to honor 9-11 and also a bit of a marketing uh, promotion for them. And it looked like this. To commemorate 9-11, you can play nine holes of golf for only $9.11 or 18 holes for $19.11. Offensive? A marketing tool honoring America? Everybody had a different opinion. That one advertisement from a small golf course in Verona, Wisconsin that most of you have never heard of suddenly became the lead story on three national cable TV programs by a, a, a fairly innocent advertisement in a newspaper. Now, how does that relate to you? Well, if something, if something really bad happens, it can suddenly shoot onto the national airwaves, no matter what it is. If something really good happens, like Jack Taylor scoring 138 points, it can shoot into the national airwaves as well. So it's just something to be conscious of that with, with the way media is now, it's so different, it's so instant, it's so automatic, that something that happens on the east side of Madison, Wisconsin, can be out there in 15 minutes, good or bad. And sometimes it could have one of your pictures or names on it. So you have to be very careful. You, who Twitters? Tweets? Twitters. How many of you Twitter? How many of Facebook? I don't do either. I'm mid 50s, so I, you know, I don't do all that cool stuff. But uh, 
I hope someone has talked to you and I hope you've thought about the power and the danger and the significance of social media. Because we talked about how important it is, you know, when your name's on the uniform. Well, not only are you playing for yourself and your school, you're playing for your parents and your family. And just like we talked about this tumble down trails thing kind of exploded on the national media, sometimes tweets can do the same thing. Sometimes Facebook posts can do the same thing. And all of a sudden it's out of control on, on, a, on a professional scale, on a collegiate scale. And, and you always have to worry about when you press that send button, if that's what you want to be out there. Uh, first we're gonna take a look at what happened to a professional football player. Uh, Jabbar Gaffney, I think he played at Florida if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after receiving taunting tweets from a Dallas Cowboys fan over Twitter in 2011, Redskins wide receiver Jabbar Gaffney lashed back telling the fan to get a life or kill yourself. Gaffney later told the press that the Twitter exchange was taken out of context. What context? He said it. And it was the first of a couple of pretty embarrassing tweets that Jabbar Gaffney sent out. And again, you know, they have a send button. They should have a don't send yet button as well, because sometimes that can save you too. So that's a case where, you know, again, this is a professional athlete with, with many, many, many followers. But it, you can see after a, a, a difficult game or a difficult rival game, where your emotions are running high, you might possibly think about saying something like that, but don't say it because once it's on the internet, then guys like me talk to groups like you about what that looks like. And you don't want that, and your family doesn't want that either. And this is the one that is from a college setting, an Ohio State football player named uh, Cardale Jones. One afternoon, he had some time on his hands, okay? So he sends out, why should we have to go to class if we came here to play football? We ain't come to play school. Classes are pointless. How proud his family must have been. And I'm guessing someone in this room might look at that and go, yeah, I kind of feel that way too about my sport. Um, what happened was, um, that happened over two years ago, by the way, and um, he was given a one-game suspension for his comments and now reportedly feels deeply remorseful for his comments about free higher education. Scholarship guy. Okay? Another example of, at the time, it may feel good and sound good, and once you hit the send button, it's out there. And again, I don't tweet, I don't Facebook, so I don't have to think about that. But all of you do. I mean, you know, when, when, when Mr. Nelson told you to turn off your phones, that probably was like breaking a leg for some of you, right? Where you couldn't, you know, I gotta have my phone at all times. And again, it's valuable to have, it's valuable to stay connected, it's valuable to, uh, and, and it can be fun to tweet and Facebook, and that's okay too. But just make sure you understand what it could turn into under the wrong circumstances. Uh, Chip Kelly, you know Chip Kelly, he's the Oregon football coach, was the Oregon football coach, now he's the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. He says, if you can't trust your players on Twitter, you probably can't trust them on third down. How about that? So apply that to your own sport. If you can't be trusted on Twitter, can you be trusted serving at match point? Can you be trusted with two on, down one in the bottom of the ninth, or down bottom of the seventh with two outs? So I guess that says something about character and says something about what you're all about. Sometimes uh, if you, you look at your tweets and, and your Facebook postings and see uh, if, if that's what message you're trying to portray, if that's the message you're really trying to get out, 
or you're frustrated or don't have much to do and just want to do something because again once it's out there it's out there forever now these the internet doesn't forget anymore and so it's just just really something to keep in mind what makes a good interview how many of you have been interviewed for a media story okay a good number of you do you like it is it uncomfortable it's uncomfortable the questions are bad the how are the answers good bad questions good answers well that's what we're looking for if we can come out of this today with good answers that'd be great um, obviously you know the person who hits the grand slam in the bottom of the seventh to win the game is usually the one that's going to get an interview but for all of you in here you have stories to tell how many of you are from Wisconsin how many of you are from outside of Wisconsin where are you from Chicago Indianapolis where else where else is outside of Wisconsin? Where are you from? Minnesota. Minnesota. My son goes to Minnesota. They get they gotta get a better football team, man. I'm paying twelve fifty a month for, or twelve fifty a semester for that stadium up there, and they don't win any games. Where else are you from? <laughs> Where else are you from outside of Wisconsin? Colorado. Colorado. Anybody else? Chicago. Okay. So I've never lived in Colorado. I've never lived in Chicago. I've passed through town a few times. So for all the experiences you guys have, not just in Wisconsin, I mean, I, I grew up in Wisconsin Rapids. I've lived in Madison. I've lived in Milwaukee for three years. I don't know a darn thing about a lot of your hometowns. Like, what, where were you from in Wisconsin? Fall Creek. Fall Creek. Crickets. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> where else? Milwaukee. Milwaukee? Uh, who's from a smaller town? Okay. All right. I grew up in a really small town, too. Man, we got stories, don't we? We've got things that happened to us that people in the big city would never believe happened. Now, you may not get a chance to tell those stories to the media, but then again, you might. So what's important, I mean, I've been interviewing athletes like you for 30-some years now, and for the most part, everybody does a pretty good job. There are some that really stand out. And there are a couple of techniques that I think are important to keep in mind to make you one of those people that stand out. Part of it is just keeping in mind that when, when you're being interviewed by a reporter, now I, I talked about the media changing these days, reporters are changing these days. Uh, if you're interviewed by someone, it may not be from someone who's been doing it for 35 years. It may be someone who's taken a class in it and has an assignment to talk to you. It could be um, an intern at a television station that they said, ah, go out and talk to this person. So there's no guarantee that the person you talk to is gonna be a highly trained professional or a real veteran person. That doesn't mean you can't do your part. You know, I hear, I hear coaches always say, we're gonna worry about what we do, not worry about what they do. Well, that's what I think you should do in an interview. It's a conversation. It's, uh, you know, it shouldn't be a scripted, you know, we're going to play in one game at a time thing, which it turns into a lot of times. But if I'm interviewing you about anything, I want to ask you a question. I want you to give me an answer. It's like we're talking on a phone, okay? If I'm doing a TV interview, where do you look? It's a conversation. Where do you look? Eye contact. If you're doing an interview for a newspaper, what do you do? Conversation. Look in the eye. If you're on a job interview, another kind of interview, what do you do? Where do you look? Eye contact. If you can make eye contact in a, in a media interview or a job interview or responding to a question in your class, you'll stand out. You'll be in that percentage that's up here. Okay? Like if, I, if I'm up here talking like this the whole time, you're probably going to turn your phones back on is what you're going to do. Man, that guy didn't even look at me. But at least I can see who's looking at their phones if I'm looking at you. <laughs> and nobody's, nobody's looking at their phones. Uh, so do you see what I'm getting at? 
if, you're, if you have a really good friend and you're talking to them, you're going to look at them. And that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish in any kind of an interview, job interview, media interview. Um, I have a couple of examples of some interviews. Who's the most popular athlete in Wisconsin? Right now. Maybe not today, but yeah, yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers. How many thousands of interviews do you think Aaron Rodgers has done? Who knows? But he's really good at it. Part of it is because of his position. Part of it is because he's the voice of the Green Bay Packers. He's the face of the Green Bay Packers. So if we see an Aaron Rodgers interview, maybe we can figure something out about how to do an interview. So we're going to take a look at an Aaron Rodgers interview. This will be a happier, happier interview because it's from last week because yesterday's interviews weren't so happy. But, but take a look at Aaron Rodgers, the way he does an interview, and see if you can pick some things out on why it's good. Okay, so that's, that's a little long, and yeah, there's a little athlete speak in there, one game at a time kind of thing, but what, what can we notice about it? I'll, I'll show you. Okay, you, oop, I missed it again. And I just try and remember that I'm one of uh, 53. Okay, he's not constantly looking at the person. I mean, you know, imagine the scene. There's probably 10 TV cameras, another... 10 newspaper guys, and so there's, there's probably 25, 30 people around his uh, locker stall, okay? But what's he doing? Notice his eyes? He's looking right at the guy who asked the question. Now, he's, all, he's not staring at the guy. He's still looking around at some other things. But he's also making that reporter feel like he's answering his question. So the reporter says, oh, that's cool. He's answering my question. So what do you think that reporter thinks about Aaron Rodgers? He's pretty cool. I ask him a question, he gives me an answer, and he looks right at me. I think that can happen on, on the level here at Madison College as well, be it a student, be it an intern, be it a, a, a brand new reporter at a local newspaper. Um, Everything you can do to make yourself look good doesn't necessarily help you today. It can help you today, but it can help you next week, it can help you next year, and go on. Um, because you never know, take, take this for example. Maybe it's a little out there, but it could happen. If you're interviewed by a local uh, newspaper reporter who's an intern in a newspaper, and let's say you're a business major. You do this interview well, and the young person who is the reporter mentions to their mom or dad who runs the local business that you want to work for someday, hey, that Joe Smith from Madison College, he was a really good interview. Well, maybe, just maybe, that person's mom or dad goes, hey, I'm looking for a good young college graduate to you know, looks me in the eye and, and speaks well and, and works hard. You just never know. It's no guarantee, but you just never know. Because whatever story is written, you want it to be positive. And if it's good publicity for you, for Madison College, who knows what it can lead to. So I think that's very important. He needs a great interview. He, he threw it to the wrong team a couple too many times yesterday, but, you know, these things happen. Uh, Nate Hoffman is with us today, I understand, right? Nate, where are you? Hi, Nate. Good to see you again. Remember what we did a couple years ago? Nate Hoffman was one of the best players in the state of Wisconsin a couple years ago at Sun Prairie High School. 
This, I assume this is the year you won the state tournament. That was two years ago, all right. Well, you won, you won two in a row. So, Sun Prairie won two in a row, right? You weren't there this year. Yeah, yeah, okay. We have something called the Game of the Week, which is a, we stream high school games online, baseball, high school baseball games online. Well, that, there's another difference. We don't put them on TV. We put the whole game on our website, on channel3000.com. Well, our deal is we show the game, and then at the end of the game, we interview the star player of the game. Well, Nate Hoffman had a great game. So here's an example of somebody who is sitting among you, who was interviewed, and Nate's already shaking his head, oh my God, I can't believe he brought this. But now, this is two years ago, so you were a senior in high school, and we had not met, and he had no idea what I was gonna ask him. But he turned out really well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the two people you're going to hear from are Aaron Rodgers and Nate Hoffman. What are the odds on that, huh? Okay. An impressive show by Sun Curry beating Middleton 10-1, and Nate Hoffman was really the start of the game. But Nate, early on, you, you got some guys on base, but then after that, you shut them down. What changed for you, Adam? Uh, I think uh, the first thing on the catch for a little off, I was kind of late with the arm. Uh, I was kind of some baseball talk there, but um, just really kind of finding my mechanics and making sure that I get the ball up front and, and uh, really show up for me there in the later innings. It's all great to beat your great power in the middle, and right? You guys really have something going here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we did it last year, and uh, last year at their place, we had a rough game, and so not to look back there, but uh, we definitely, it's always fun to play these guys in a fun way like that. Okay. Yeah. And so Going to 6-0 that 10-1 win over Middleton. Fantastic. I gotta find my How about that? Nature red as a beef, doggone it. Now he did a fantastic job. Now, that's a senior in high school. Some of the questions I asked weren't even questions, they were statements. You know? Usually a question has a question mark at the end of it. Yeah, Middleton's your great rival, huh? Well, that's not a question. I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I still mess that up. But Nate could have said, yep, there are rivals. But he didn't. A lot of times you'll get a lot of yes and no questions, and you can answer them yes or no, but you know the reporter needs more than that. Uh, if you're in an interview setting and you don't understand the question, don't answer the question unless you know what the question is. Make sure that you have a clear sense of what, what the answer should be. And if you don't understand the question, what do you do? You say, I don't understand the question. Can you ask it again? Um, if you're interviewed by media, you can stay in control of the, the interview by doing things like that. Uh, you know, a TV interview is different than a radio interview, is different than a newspaper interview, is different than an internet media interview. But as we go along with, with many more different kinds of media and types of media that we haven't invented yet, the chances of everyone being interviewed more increase. And there's an old saying in television, you know, when you're doing a TV newscast, there's a little red light. When the camera comes on, the little red light comes on. And what you do is you say, always, when that light, red light comes on, do your best. Uh, another area that Scott and I were talking about, do you guys have to do like athlete surveys like, you know, my favorite food or my hometown, something for websites or anything like that, or talk about your family or fill out these surveys, okay? Uh, a tendency on that sort of thing might be to do something funny and weird and, you know, something that you can tell your friends, hey, hey, <laughs> look at that. Well, be it your picture on the, on the next to your name on the website, be it the information you provide about what is your favorite food, about what's your favorite song, What's your favorite thing to do? Um, that's going to be there too. That's going to be there on the website. That's going to be that. That's that's something that a lot of you have done, and I can't emphasize the fact on. Be considerate. Think about you. Think about your family. Think about what your friends are going to say and see about it. 
and think about how everybody in the world, if it's on the internet, can see it. Everybody in Beijing can see what's on the internet. And uh, not, that, you know, not that everyone will understand it, or not that everybody will stop by, but it can happen. So just be conscious of all that. Um, we're going to invite a couple people up. We talk about interviews and their importance and how to do them, and how everybody has a story. I would like to welcome to you Frank Coachella. Frank, is it that Coachella? Is that correct? Where's Frank? Frank, come on up. Have a chair, Frank. You didn't know this was going to happen, did you? All right, well, welcome to Madison. You know where Frank's from? He's from Leeds, England. Where's Leeds? Jason, I might be calling you here pretty soon. So, I don't know how many of you knew Frank before that, but we sure know Frank a little better. And what's the one thing we're going to remember from all that? That a soccer match in England is better than the Packers and Bears. All right, all you Wisconsin people, how many of you think he's crazy? A show of hands, very good. But it gives us a, persp it gives us a perspective Okay, that was a fantastic interview. You know, witty, charming, didn't say yes or no, but just spoke from his heart and spoke from his experience. You know, there's nothing there that's going to trip him up because he spoke the truth. You know, there's, there's nothing terribly controversial. I mean, well, the one controversial thing is that, that uh, City and United is a better rivalry than Packers Bears, but man, you play that in the media, that's gold. I mean, well, you know, that's, people would be talking about that for days if we showed that, and we probably will show that if we come to the store in the fall. But, uh, but now, I've learned something, you've learned something. How many, knew, how many of you guys know Frank, personally? Okay, so a lot of you do. But did, did you know the stories about what he talked about? 
Okay, to some degree? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, well, somebody else is going to get on the hook here. Michaela. Nigel? Neagle. Neagle. Nigel? Neagle. Not here. Not here. Oh, she must have known she was going to get. Well, then, we're going to go to Megan. Megan Hankey. Megan? Woo! Megan, Megan, Megan. Hi, Megan. I want you to do the next couple days. If you're, in, does everybody have a bio? Everybody in every sport? Yeah, our spring sport athletes, which she is, she's one of them. Yep. Yeah. Still the old. Bio. Springs, okay. Spring sports are still the old bio. Okay, so that's that's cool. Then that's still like that. And our, and our winter sports are currently. And winter sports are currently being uh, updated. Season. Okay. So the fall sports. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when your sport is updated and it's posted. Make sure you check it. I mean, you're going to get birthday presents for like two months, <laughs> which isn't all bad, I guess. But. And 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 you know, and I'll, if if something's not right, it could be a penmanship error. It could be all sorts of things, you know. And and uh, I mean, if I tried to handwrite my bio, I'd probably be born in Oklahoma, and you know, I, I'd rustle pigs and. And that sort of thing. Really, pig wrestling? Is there a is there a professional pig wrestling tour by any chance? Or? I don't know, but she wants to find out. She wants to find out if there's a professional pig wrestling tour. Um, so, you know, if you have a buyout, check it. If you don't like the picture, can we change the picture? Sure. Sure. <laughs> it's like glamour shot. It's like glamour shot. Okay. Well, that's but but the but the point is. For some people, that's going to be their first exposure to you, okay? So make that first impression the best and most accurate first impression you can. If you're fortunate enough to be interviewed by the media, now you have a couple of tips. 
You look at the person asking the question. You make eye contact. Don't be afraid to smile. You all got great smiles. And if someone asks you a yes or no question, give them more than yes or no. And then when an article comes out, sometimes you get misquoted a little bit, maybe. I've, I've done interviews for newspapers, and I've been misquoted a little bit, and I read it, and I go, man, that's just not right. But that kind of thing happens, too. But as long as you're upfront, honest, and straightforward, you can never get in trouble. Same thing with tweets, same thing with Facebook. Okay? That's pretty much what I've got. I've heard there's going to be a question and answer session to some degree. There better be. Otherwise, you'll all be graded down. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about media, interviews, anything? Gossip? Oh, you know. Local television news gossip? I can answer those questions as well. Jason? What's the most asked question from your standpoint? The most asked question from my standpoint that I asked? In general? Well, I tell you what, I, I go back to these biographies. If we're doing a story on someone, um, the first place we go to is the biography because there can be interesting tidbits. They, can, they tell about your history. They tell where you're from. Um, now, I, I grew up in Wisconsin Rapids, which is in the same conference as Antigo. So when I saw Antigo, I'm thinking, Red Robins. You know Cal Ehlers by any chance? Does that even ring a bell? Okay, because Cal worked at the station in Wausau for many years, and he's from Manigo. But, uh, you know, I, those are the kind of things that, that help create stories. Now, there's nothing about pig wrestling here, but I'll tell you what. When we do your story, I'm sorry, but we're doing something on pig wrestling. <laughs> you know? Of all the wonderful things you've accomplished in your career, if we showed your story and talked about pig wrestling, and we asked people at the end of the half hour of our newscast, what was the thing you're going to remember from that show? I think that lady that had, that was a pig wrestler. And it's funny how that works. But, you know, the question we get most, the question we ask most, are going to start with your biography. You know, unless there's, you know, statistics, uh, a great accomplishment in a game, I had three quarter court shot or something like that. So those are the kind of things that, that, that the media will go off of. And you can almost anticipate some of the questions based on what you have on your biography online. Okay? Are there going to be some, uh, some reporters that are trying to get you to say something negative? Are there going to be some reporters that get you something to say negative, that get to get you to say something that's negative? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of snakes in the valley or something. What's that old for it's saying? There's, an old, there, there's, there's some rattlesnakes out there. Now, um, Some people in the media are going to try to make a name for themselves. That, that happens. That's real. Um, if someone's been in Madison, Wisconsin for a long time or, or wherever where you're living, they don't need to do that usually. Now, that's not to, not to say that we wouldn't report something that may be deemed negative that we don't have backed up with facts and that sort of thing. But... Is it possible that someone from an internet site you've never heard of is going to come up to you and say, that coach you had two years ago, he had, that person wasn't very nice, did they? Didn't they like, hit you in practice and things like that? And I'm not saying that, that you would say yes, but, but you can see how that's the kind of scenario you're talking about, I think. Well, if something like that starts building momentum, sure, sure. You could be misquoted. The chances of it are very slim, but sure, it can happen. So, again, if someone reports, if a reporter comes to you and asks questions, and, and you, can, you can probably tell they're trying to get at something. I'll bet. How do I get out of the situation? How do you get out of the situation? It's a very difficult question. Um, if you're not feeling comfortable with an interview, you can say, I don't like where this interview is going. And, 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 you know, that can give the reporter the clue that you're on to him. 
So again, that, that goes back to being in control of the situation. Um, and if you're misquoted, and if it turns into a big controversy because you were misquoted, you can go after that guy and, and bring all your lawyers and sue the daylights out of him because you're going to win because you've got the truth on your side. Okay? So uh, that's a great question. And again, with more different types of media that are coming into the, that, that we don't even know about yet, you know, um, because again, you know, I'm on TV twice a, twice a night for the last 30 years, and I'm guessing there's a lot of people in, in this room that have no idea who I am, but I've been on TV forever. Well, an internet reporter that you've never heard of from a site you've never heard of, well, there's a lot more of those. You know, you'd think everybody would know me, but not everybody knows me, and I've been on TV for 30 years in this town. So, so you just have to be careful, and, and a lot of it is a, a good feeling in your gut. Um, if you ask, Gary Anderson, the football coach of the Badgers, which reporters he trusts and which reporters he doesn't trust, he could tell you. He's been in town eight months. But he, you can get a sense of who you can trust and who you can't. Um, for example, Barry Alvarez, the athletic director at Wisconsin, was on a show we had called Sidelines. Um, it's a half hour talk show and he was interviewed for the whole half hour he requested that one of our regular cast not be on that show because he knew. He knew that the guy was going to try and stir up trouble. So, but you, it, it's hard to explain, but I think you'll know it when you, when you feel it. Okay. That was fantastic. Jeez. Yes. Try to stir up trouble? I tell you what, I'm a farm kid from Wisconsin Rapids. I don't like conflict. I want everybody to like me. So I really haven't. I mean, there are stories when you're not pleased about having to say it. You're not comfortable saying bad things. Like, uh, oh God, what was it? Oh, I know what it was. It was, uh, there was a guy from the Wisconsin football program who uh, was out at the Rose Bowl and he set up some party and and it turned out that he was hitting on male managers or something like that and I got to say the word genitals on TV. That was just a fantastic moment in my career. <laughs> that, you know that that really was great. But that's part of the job. Now that's not trying to stir up trouble. That's just you know telling the story. So I've certainly been more of that than trying to stir up trouble. I, the greatest stories, the reason I got into this was to tell stories of achievement, of people overcoming difficulties, of showing exciting finishes to games, of, uh, of good things. That's why I got in sports. I've been asked to be a newscaster a couple of times in my life to make the transition over to news. The reason I don't do it is because I don't want to talk about murders. I don't want to talk about crimes. I want to talk about you guys making shots and, and getting hits and, and getting the winning points in a volleyball match. That's, that to me is fun. So, so no, I have not wished to or have not had to stir up trouble. But I must report trouble when it occurs. I want to be happy. I want to smile. I don't want to, I don't want to be grousing. Okay. You guys were fantastic, by the way. Tell you what, I got to see your faces the whole time. Yes, sir. Hey! Big dog. Where is the sideline show tape? Yeah. Every Thursday, 11 a.m., or excuse me, 10 a.m., Channel 3 Studio. Big dog. Is it? Big dog. How long have you been around? This is my 39th year. 39th year. That's the guy you should talk to about interviews and stuff. No, Gary's been a great, you know, and Gary, he always calls in our scores, the scores from out here, and you always give the future schedule to him. He always tells you the next three games that are coming up. And he's been doing that for 39 years, and we thank you for your dedication and service. You've been a wonderful group. If you ever have any questions, you've got a great support staff. Um, sometimes you can get in situations in a big hurry and it all comes down on you fast. Well, all these people here and... Feel free to call me too if, if, if I can be of any help. 
but there's a lot of support. That's the great thing about a place like Madison College and a lot of other places, is that there's always someone there to help. And if you get in a situation, it's never as bad as you think it is. Okay? This should be a great experience. Your, your college experience should be fantastic. Your athletic experience should be fantastic. Don't let anybody change that, including yourself. Make it positive. Make it the, the, the best years of your life because in a, lot of, in a lot of cases, they are. So thanks very much for your time. Enjoy your rest of your school year.